you all very much. Thank you. With all these references to age tonight, I just want to put the lie to one thing, and that is, it is not true that NASA would not let me go out on a spacewalk because they were afraid of my age I might wander off somewhere. <laughs> But it is true, I do get a lot of emails joking about age, and I think you might get a kick out of a couple of them there. They have no relation to anything, except I just think they're funny. <laughs> but one of them is, is about the elderly gentleman who started downtown, and is, about 10 minutes later, his uh, wife calls him on the car phone and says, Oh, Fred, please be careful. I just saw on TV where there's a car driving the wrong way on the freeway. <laughs> and he says, Mary, there's not one, there are hundreds of them. <laughs> and another one, the three old astronauts are walking out across the ramp. And you know, as you get older, some of your faculties do change. And not, not always for the better. And so the uh, three elderly astronauts are walking out across the ramp, and the first one says, It's windy! And the second one looks at him and says, no, it's Thursday. <laughs> and the third one said, oh, me too, let's go get a beer. <laughs> That's all the ones I remember at the moment here. There's no relationship to anything except I just wanted to share that with you. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you all for the on the platform here for your very kind words and and uh, and all the expressions of future of the the ex expressions of hope for future of the space program. Uh, Bill Nelson put uh, uh, named a number of things we already have learned, and I think that's only the beginning. And every one of those things that he mentioned are things that they don't just happen. Uh, for somebody and, and benefit of somebody in space. It's a benefit of people right here on Earth. Benefit of you, your kids, your grandkids. And that to me is the important part. I think the space program has always meant two kinds of exploration to me. And number one is just going new places, low Earth orbit, moon, beyond sometime to Mars, so on. And that's important. That's the exploration. That's the macro exploration. But equally important are those things that, that Bill talked about that are what we learn to do as we travel to new places. We use that ability then to research more and more different things we never contemplated to begin with. And they're things, that's the micro exploration, the laboratory type exploration that is evident in the, in the International Space Station. When I was in the Senate the last few years I was there, I floor managed the uh, bill, even though I was not on the committee, but they asked me to floor manage the bill on the uh, station when it came through the Senate for approval and for its appropriation. And I did that because I thought it had more potential for benefit for people right here on Earth because of the research we could do there in this most unique laboratory ever put up than any other thing I'd ever dealt with. And that's in the micro exploration area. And we spent over a hundred billion dollars putting that up there, very expensive. But it has the greatest potential for good also. And I think it's too bad, that I really regret we won't get into all the politics of this, but I think it's too bad that in a, a previous administration the decision was made to end the shuttle, so now we have to go someplace else to even get up to our station to do that kind of research. And I regret that that is the way things have developed, but Bob and his people and all the, the other people working on the, the program, many of you here tonight who are, who are working here too, uh, are working very hard to get the next generation of spacecraft and boosters going so we can continue that, that exploration. Not just out to see how far we can keep somebody alive in a can and bring them back again, but the ability to open new areas where we can do basic fundamental research. And people say, well, what, what good is research always? Well, the things like Bill mentioned, as well as the 
I think uh, everything we ever, every bit of progress made by human beings has been made because somebody was curious about the unknown. Somebody was curious about if we do things a little differently or we learn something new or if we combine these elements, maybe we can do this or that or something else. And it works. And if there's one thing we have learned through the history of our country, it's that money spent on export, money spent on basic research has a way of paying back in the future beyond anything we ever see at the outset. And I think that that's just going to be as true in the future as it's been in the past. Look, look how this nation developed in 125 years, just a blink in the eye of history. This nation went from the Revolutionary War to about 1900 and became a leader of nations after being a nothing nation, a couple of million people along the eastern seaboard. And we took over leadership of the world because of two things, basic education for all of our people and basic research. And those are the two things that we better excel in, or 50 or 75 years from now, we may not be the world's leader. And I think it has that kind of importance to it in what you're doing right here and in, in the support uh, for the, uh, not only the station, but for space research in general that will open up new fields in which we can do not only macro but micro research uh, that benefits everyone. John mentioned the uh, clothes that I, I used for the congressional speech way back in, in uh, 62. Uh, and I, I've I think that uh, is a, a very good, uh, I like that quote, and I used it the other day on the, the at the gold medal ceremony in Washington also, uh, to close those remarks also. Uh, because I think we're involved with something very, very big that can benefit all of humanity. You do indeed, when you're up there, have a different view of your, your world in which you live when you come back and you've looked down and seen whole nations at a glance. And I was never privileged to be on a lunar flight, as Dick Gordon, who's here someplace tonight, was. Uh, and we're coming back, they look at the, the little the blue marble back here. And we didn't go that far out, of course, on the, the flights that I was on. But uh, you still look down, you see whole big swaths of the Earth uh, beyond anything that human beings have been able to see before. And it does give you a different perspective. And I might, I might say that it, the, the more we share this with other people and work together, the more we perhaps are working toward peace in the world. Uh, just a little side note on that one here, and then I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm going on too long here already. But uh, just a little side note on that. Before that first orbital flight, I was looking at the, the, the maps one day and the, the orbital track was on there, and I thought, you know, this is going to go over the, in southwest Africa, it's going to go over the edge of the Namibian, uh, Namibia and the Kalahari Desert. Now, there are Aborigines still out in that area that we don't know much about. And up across this, the center of Australia, the Aborigines there in the outback are still there. And up across Papua New Guinea on one of the orbits. And across there, all those three areas were there are three areas that still have Aborigines left. And I was thinking, if I had to make an emergency re-entry and came down in one of those areas, well, the people on the ground there uh, might hear a sonic boom, ker boom. They look up, here comes a little black dot, comes down, thing billows out of it. It comes down in the clearing here and sits down, and the hatch blows off the side, and out steps this thing in a silver suit. <laughs> You're going to be one of two or three things. You're going to be God, chief, or dead. <laughs> quick, be quick. So you better have some means of communicating. And so I wrote out a little message. Me, big friend, take me to your leader, all the, the things that you would, you would think about and had this, this uh, very serious message uh, translated into some of the more primitive languages of the world that were most likely to be used in those particular areas and had them translated into phonetic language that I could use to try to get this message across if in the unlikely event 
I had to come down in one of these areas. And what I'm building up to is this. In those more primitive languages of the world, the word for stranger and the word for enemy were the same word. In other words, if you don't know somebody, you're much more likely to consider them an enemy and want to fight them and be, be against them and you're automatically against them because you don't know them. And what have we done in the space program? We have 16 nations working together, the biggest cooperative international program ever put together any time in the International Space Station. And future plans are to work with other nations in this, and so it's a, it's a force for good in that area too, uh, in addition just to the pure scientific information that, uh, that we, we have. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight and, and for the support that all of you give and for the uh, group that we met with before, the pioneers. I must say in the group that uh, many of you came over here tonight after we had met earlier uh, with some of the people who were workers on the on the flight on Mercury flights back in those early days, and there are a lot more bald heads and gray heads in that group than than uh, others. But those are the people who did uh, who did lay the foundation for what goes on in all these other areas. And uh, so we may be up on the point of that thing and get a lot of the attention and. And uh, we had ticker tape parades and all that sort of thing. But the people that made it work that are doing the research, it's so important for this country and for the world and for how we get along with everybody. Uh, you're the ones who deserve the accolade. So give yourselves a great big ovation.